Welcome to Jump Shots from the Goal Line. I am Jonathan Dugan, your host. I am joined by my two amigos. I have Mr. John Henningston, as always, and we have our in-house gambling expert, Mr. 80%, 30%, 60%, whatever you want to call him, Mr. Ben Crownover. He's coming from Flavortown, USA tonight. Ben, how the hell are you doing tonight, man? How are you doing? I'm legitimately wearing a Guy Fieri costume right now. I, just, I got it in the mail. I had to try it on. It's incredible. This is one of those times, and just so everybody knows, I want to take this podcast to YouTube eventually uh, where we do some video stuff. I know we wanted to make sure that obviously our content was going to be there, our, our audience was going to be there, but God damn it, if tonight wasn't the night where this would have been perfect to have our video up, having Guy Fieri just given gambling picks. Don't you agree, John? Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly would just watch Ben – throw together some apps for 30 minutes just to see like where it went. I mean, I'm down, you know, I hit up the frozen <laughs> section of like of Walmart and I just start making TGI Fridays appetizers and just like grunting and groaning <laughs> as I eat them yeah. on the camera. 100%, just just... gambling advice <laughs> in between. <laughs> Preheat your oven. <laughs> yeah. Just God, this is gripping. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love it. Yeah. So eventually we'll get there, guys. So prepare. Um, I'm thinking when I move into the new house and I actually will have privacy and I won't have, you know, my father-in-law walking behind me or my wife coming up behind me, whatever. Uh, hopefully audience will have some kind of video coming up. Then again, maybe that'd be like the content you're looking for is just really stupid shit going on in the backgrounds because, you know, we'll bring that to your your freaking Eye, eye holes too. Yeah. So I do like that your new house just sounds like you're just leaving your family. You're like, it's going to be so much better. I won't have any family at all. It's going to be great. Yeah. When I just become a bachelor all over again, let me tell you right now, this, this podcast is going to take off. All right. No, in all seriousness, just having my own space will be fantastic. God, 2,500 I square feet of freedom. I hope my wife does not listen to this opening. Chances are she won't, so it's fine. Um, cool. Well, not a, not I know, a fan. Not a fan. I know all three of us have something just sticking in our craw tonight. Um, I know Ben, you're the one that brought it up in the pre-show stuff. You, what, what's what's in your your craw, bro? If I gave a shit about the New York Yankees, I would watch <laughs> a New York Yankees game. What were they thinking? Dude, I don't know. Like, I mean, and, to be and, honest with you, like uh, watching college football Saturdays and having an Aaron Judge walk in between every now and then, I think it's great. Well, if you shut the – no, shut your mouth. I mean, <laughs> I I understand like a look in because they've done this shit for years with other games. And like, oh, yeah, I'm interested in like the random, you know, touchdown in a game that maybe I have some money on. But to cut into my game and then to specifically take my audio away, what, the audio is the biggest sin of all of this. I don't care. I like, you want to put them on this? I, whenever I knew this was going to happen, I was like, yeah, whatever. No big deal. I had no idea they were going to take the audio away from the game that I was watching. And there was like, I swear, the first cut in that I was watching there was some like sort of confusion. The the refs are huddling and like talking, and I'm like, "What is happening? What is happening?" And it's like, "Oh yeah, Aaron Judge still hunting for that elusive 62." I'm like, "Shut up, shut up!" Like I don't care. It was the worst thing about my Saturday. No, dude, I I completely agree with you. Like the thing that really sucks about the whole thing, though, is like it's not even a baseball record, right? Isn't this like the seventh most home runs ever hit? Um, it's, it's a Yankee record. And like, this just goes to show how arrogant like the New York fan base is, is where they think that the whole nation needs to stop what the hell they're doing and listen to Aaron judge walk because he's potentially going to break a Yankee record. Uh, I get the synchronicities of it. It's really cool, blah, 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 but I do not care at all. It's I awful. Just, I just don't get like the the idea that we've had this steroid era. Like 
you might strike that from the record books or whatever, or never let those guys into the Hall of Fame. I don't really care. Baseball is what it is. It's baseball. Fourth best sport in, in America at best. Um, and it's like, I don't know. You like, I saw the, all the home runs I wanted to see as a kid with Sosa. Like, you know, like, I don't, I don't care about this. It's just, it's so stupid. And I'm so, they're not doing this shit during the playoffs, I hope. But I don't know. No, I mean, he already, he already got the record, unless we forget anyway. And Henny, you can back me up on this. It's not like he owns the all time home run record. That belongs to uh, our, near and dear to our heart, John Dowd. Right, right, Henny? Yeah, John Dowd, 73 home runs, greatest player in MVP baseball history. <laughs> oh, God. Unden- Barry Barnes, undeniable. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Barry Barnes, yeah Barry Barnes, if you don't know, are speaking in code. But this is like a two Americas thing anyways. Like, half the people are still holding on to this, like, near and dear, like, oh, but this is like the Yankee record, or this is like the real – like, dude, no. I watched Barry Bonds hit 73 home runs, and that's the record. Like – Wake me! I said this like wake me up at seventy four, dude. Like if you get there, like may, like then I would at least be like, all right, at least you're like actually going for the record. Like I don't understand. Like they're trying to repackage this and resell me and like retroactively say that this isn't the record and the record again. Like you stop breaking the record or decide what the record actually is. Like it's stupid. This is just dumb. I hate it. This baseball it sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's well documented how we feel about baseball in this podcast as it is. Now, granted, this will change if the Braves make the World Series again this year. You will hear it from myself. That's how much of a uh, fair weather fan I am with baseball. Um, but, dude, it's, like I said, it's such it's a regional record. It's freaking dumb. It, I'm so sick of, like, this New York media bullshit bias that happens all the time. And, like, again, it's it's the seventh best home runs of all time. Um, like Ben said, all three of us grew up in the steroid era where dudes were just ripping bombs, hitting dingers all over the place. And it just goes back to our original argument. Henny and I had bring back, bring back roids, bring back the juice. If, if the MLB really wants to just loop in fans and, and stop losing shares of, of the media, let them juice up, dude. Like, look at, look at what's happening now. Somebody is, you know, a, about to well, they already did. He already hit the record for for a home run record in a regional area for just one team. Imagine if you'd let dudes just start juicing up again, hitting hitting the roids, and these guys are going for 80, 90 home runs in a season, bro. I guarantee I'd be watching baseball again. I don't know about you guys. They should do steroids in every sport, absolutely every yes. single one. Like, I want to see what the best a human can do is, not like what the best they can do is without modifying something who cares give them all steroids it's funny that you bring that up dude because i actually sent over um a clip over to henny earlier today for about brian cushing (laughs) must be nice to be in the inner circle wow wow (laughs) you you gotta be on the podcast for a little bit longer okay anyway like i sent him just like this tweet where it was talking about like steroids giving people superpowers and it was brian cushing being a gunner on special teams and he just gets into a fight and like takes his helmet off and like that's when he like banged his head against the other dude's helmet and just starts bleeding all over the place like that's what i want on sundays and saturdays too like make, make it collegiate collegiate steroids all right like if we're gonna have guys just going balls to the wall like you know screw cte like let's this is what we're tuning in for like I, I need the old timey Brian Cushing style football on my on my television set on Saturdays and Sundays. Think about how good Devontae Smith would be for the Eagles. If he wasn't the Slim Reaper, you know, <laughs> just running around. It's true. He'd at least pack on five to ten pounds. He might gain three pounds and be electric. He was just yeah. it would just be like all in his Achilles. I know it. Like the way he's built, I'm telling you, he just puts on two and a half pounds in each Achilles. He's built like Dude, a Victoria's Secret imagine? model. Can you imagine, though, real quick, like, ben, RIP, you, made Tommy. A, <laughs> you made a valid point of, like, bring steroids into every sport. Like, let's just go through the sports really quick. Like, if you bring steroids into cricket, I would watch cricket. If you bring steroids into golf, I'd probably watch more golf. Like, what about what? just like a, what about like a cricket on steroids? Just like a regular cricket. 
that I'd also watch the hell out of that. Give me Jiminy Cricket on roids. All right. Yeah. I, I need. Want see, I just want to see where the bar was at. Yes, I need well, the Jose I, Canseco of Jiminy Crickets. I still don't think I'd watch WNBA, but that's just me. Well, you know, no, with Brittany Griner being in Russia still, it's it's a just, tough watch as it yeah, is. I was saying, I'm like, well, that's, that's your opinion, then. <laughs> <laughs> you give me, you give me Brittany Griner back in the WNBA with steroids. She get <laughs> Those girls are going to be getting the same salaries as the men in no time. Let me tell you, because I would watch it. So. Can you imagine hockey like with everybody on steroids, Ben? Like oh, just the God. checks that would be going on. What if what if in hockey just athletes played? You know, that's yeah. that's a really funny joke, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I like that is like I'm just I'm just dude, hockey. It's seriously, it's just I mean, look, it's a rich kid sport. It's a fun sport, but like the real athletes aren't playing hockey. It's 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 widely known. Jalen Ramsey tried playing hockey. hockey and like he was like, yo, this is hard as hell. Because it is. It's the hand-eye coordination. It's like the speed of the game. It's the violence of the game. It's it's a million different things going on. I think hockey is the perfect sport. You haven't had me on for hockey season. But, like, I love college football. I still think hockey is the best sport to watch for entertainment. Make your case right now, Ben. Why should I watch hockey? There is, I believe... All right, yeah, moving on. That was a great segment on why I should watch hockey. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, dude. It'd be so great if we're on YouTube right now and we could cut to a cricket on steroids. That'd be so sick. It'd be so (laughs) sick. We'd really be – I don't think we have a producer yet, but that would be sick. Dude, I am the producer. That's why the episode from last week was the episode from hell. So I'm sorry to our <laughs> listeners. Oh, man. Dude, you know, speaking of crickets, they just released that new Pinocchio movie not that long ago. Like, if you give me that CGI Pinocchio, like Jiminy Cricket on roids, like, that's nightmare fuel. So that's that just might be what I put the the, the thumbnail image of this episode. So. Ben, I'm going to I'm going to let you redeem yourself. I'm not going to let you talk about hockey cuz we don't do that on this podcast. I'm sorry. Um, but we got some college football going on this weekend, but what do we got going on? Like, we do. What are we some got, of the big games? Well, I mean, it, it's the the most exciting game everybody had circled on their calendar the entire year. You have unbeaten TCU at unbeaten Kansas. Um, the if you had told me that this would be where what I was most excited for this weekend, like even four weeks ago, I told you to shut up. You're crazy. Um, the line's at seven over under at 68 and a half. I keep doing this thing where I'm betting way too early, even though I try to make a conscious effort not to, but I, I just have this fear that the line will move on me. And it did um, <laughs> pretty dramatically um, in favor of TCU. Um, so I originally had Kansas at, Plus four. Um, I still love Kansas. I will. I'm just gonna. Kansas is gonna go undefeated. They're gonna be national champions. That's that's where Dude, I'm so, at on this one. And Henny, you can back me up on this. This is gonna be the Josh Neighbors game of the weekend because on one hand he told us Kansas would be really good, and guess what? He was right. On the other hand, he told us he wasn't a believer in TCU, and here we are. TCU is also really really good. So it's like, hey. You know, what What side of the coin is he right on? Um, I want to say I'm going to go with TCU because I don't know if you guys know who their quarterback is. Have you guys been paying attention? Their purple team, I it have. doesn't matter. His name it's is Andy Duggan. Dalton. It's Duggan. Andy Dalton's Isn't back. It? Yeah, it's his Duggan. Name is, his name is Max Duggan, and it's close enough for me. <laughs> he has one count. more G. That doesn't count. He, he has one more G, all right? He's, he's that much cooler than me. He has one more G. And the guy has 11 touchdowns and no interceptions this year. So I think he's going to get the job done. That's that's the sole basis I would I would bet on TCU. But I mean like 11 11 touchdowns I'm not I'm not trying to bash it cuz it's not like I could go out there and throw 11 touchdowns in college let alone high school or anything like that. But like 11 isn't that high. True, but Daniels from Kansas is like a Heisman candidate. And he has 11 touchdowns and one interception. So who's to say who's better, right? He, he's I mean, a gunslinger. Say? That, that Duggan True. guy, you know, he's afraid. He he's, a, he's afraid of getting picked off. 
I'm so, not going to lie to you. Two years ago, I watched Max Duggan, and I thought he was just the worst quarterback I've ever watched. And I was embarrassed that we share almost the same name. So <laughs> he's I, feast I don't have to tell man. you on this one. He's feast he or is. famine. He is really feast or famine. Even if you watch him, like he'll still wildly miss, and like he can be erratic. But if TCU is wearing those uniforms they wore last week, Kansas is Ooh. in trouble. Because, again, the there's something about job. like when you do purple right, when you do that purple right, it is nice. And they did – I mean, it was nice. Yeah. Dude, they did. I saw a uh, a tweet. Somebody put that Texas was going to come out with a new alternate uniform that incorporates purple, just because well, that's like the secret sauce to beating oh. Kansas this year. <laughs> I panicked. I, that I was hilarious. like, "How? How is this happening?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, dude, what a transition to the the Red River rivalry. Our our next big game. There's, I have no strong feeling on this game. I think Oklahoma's bad. Losing Dylan Gabriel last week, not ideal. Um, the line's at seven. In theory, you should just take Texas. But every single year I watch the Red River rivalry, there's like 95 points scored. So I'm just taking the over, 65 and a half. Not that crazy. Um, well, it probably shouldn't hit, actually, with Dylan Gabriel out, but who cares? I'm, I'm just – No, it, sh- it should, though. You're, I'm with you. Why do, what, like It always hits, and didn't Oklahoma give up 1,000 points last week? So – I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, they uh did you see the TCU tweet? It was actually probably tweet Hall of Fame for the week. No, what was it? Who hit sixty two first, TCU or Aaron Judge? <laughs> nice. Man, just so, welcome back, you know, bring yeah. it full circle on the show. I love it. They did Where drop go, 50, they dropped fifty five on him, man. I mean like Maybe you just need Texas to drop 62 of your 65 and a half, but you got to bet that over on that one. You have to. That's that's like the Lunder. It's all those, you know, the Pro Bowl over. There's just certain games you have to bet a certain side of it. You got to take the over in this one. I'm going to go Texas only because of Bijan. That's that's legitimately the only reason I'm even playing this game. Uh, big fan of Mustard. Bijan. Yeah, I'm like, I, yeah, I ride with Bijan. Um I just like the over too, though. I just think it's a fun game to bet and just like take an over on and let it ride, man. It's just, it's a, it's always a good game. And I mean, honestly, both programs are struggling. Like this is not, I would say if uh, Sarkeesian didn't have Arch coming in, we'd already be talking about it if he's in trouble, if they lose. And Venable is just Mm -hmm. not up to a good start. It's too early probably, except that it's Oklahoma. So who knows by the end of the year, he could already be on the hot seat. Like it's just, it's been ugly for these two schools that are going to be heading into the SEC soon enough. You can't. You can't. I love all the. Good. I love. I love all the tweets I'm seeing that the Big Twelve is cutting all the fat, getting rid of Texas and Oklahoma. They're like, yeah, oh, yeah finally, yeah. They're, getting, they're getting rid of the the shit teams in the conference. I'm like, God, oh, that's that's great content for this year. I love that. Sarkeesian has not started out very well, but now that he has Arch Manning just waiting, like if they were to even like hint that his job was on the line, and they lost Arch Manning. It would be the, the end of Texas football. I know they're already like dead and they've been dead, but like Quinn Ewers and all that stuff. Yeah, hey, you got a chance, but you can't get you can't get rid of him no matter how bad he is until Arch Manning is on campus. Exactly. Dude, no, nobody should be surprised that Sarkeesian is off to a slow start. And John, you can speak to this probably even more than I can because it's a little bit more your era. But like, dude, he was he wasn't good at Washington. He underperformed there. He underperformed at SC. Like he always recruits well, but he doesn't know how to coach. He's a good coordinator. He's not a good head coach. So this is no surprise to me. I don't know about you, honey. No, I just think, I, yeah, I think exactly what you said. I think he's a good coordinator and he's never really proven it as a head coach. So like, he's never really shown that he can run a program. And I think, you know, obviously he got the Nick Saban, Nick Saban stamp of approval, which everybody gets like, you're coming out of there. I bet he learned everything, but like, you just, you, you're not Nick Saban. Like, that's just not what it is. So, I don't know. It's probably enough on these two, uh, two yeah. losers, but bet the yeah. over. Um, <laughs> probably, I mean, we got some good good ones, and then we have some interesting betting line ones. Like, a, a solid game that I will absolutely be tuning into is Tennessee at LSU. The line is now at three. The Ooh. over-under is at 64.5. The line did open at 3.5, so I guess I will be sweating that one out. Um, hoping that Tennessee doesn't win by a field goal only and instead they went by a touchdown but i i look at that line i'm like i know lsu is ranked 25 now tennessee 
should easily win this game, which means they'll probably lose it. And this will probably be a, a loser for me. This is probably when a top 10 team goes down. But I have to go with Tennessee on this one. Like, I, I, I can't in good conscience take LSU just because they're at home. I hope Tennessee wins. You like I like Hinton Hooker a lot. Like he's, yeah, he's fun as hell to watch. Like he's really good, and they looked great against Florida. Um, and LSU, like they have just so much shit going against them. With like at least my my fan base mind, like I don't like Brian Kelly. Number one, him. he's a clown. And then Jaden Daniels was just Mister ASU forever. His mom paid for recruits to come there, and that's why they're in he trouble. should take steroids. He's the skinniest kid alive. Yeah, he's their whole team right now, though, because he I mean, he's not lighting the world on fire passing the ball, but he's got 321 yards rushing. I don't know. I just feel like if you just play spy and just force Jaden Daniels to pass, that's what the Pac-12 did for years. Um, yeah, Tennessee should I win. Yeah, I have no idea how they haven't caught up to the fact that Jaden Daniels cannot pass the ball. He is literally a let it break down scramble quarterback, which is fine and can work. But to your point, if they just – if someone just spies him, this is the end of the LSU scoring points. Like, and I do think Tennessee caught a big break. Like, right, they're not going in Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, so this isn't Death Valley, yeah. Death Valley, where you you know let let LSU fans supercharge their batteries with with booze. Like, they're just going to come in there. So, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't. We can't all like Tennessee because if we do, that means we're wrong. So, I'll just say LSU and then do what I want with my money on Saturday. You know, real quick to a good point is they already played a, a quarterback similar to Jaden Daniels, who's much better than him and Anthony Richardson, right? So they should have the game plan how to shut down a mobile True. quarterback like this. You know, just real quick. Maybe the under. Maybe the under is the move. I, might, I don't I might know. Move. Tennessee can score, man. Tennessee can put know, up a lot of points. 64 and a half is kind of high. Um, uh, LSU's defense is pretty good. I'll probably bet more money on this game, but um, getting into the uh, the Pac-12 world here, Utah at UCLA line is three and a half. Over under is at sixty four and a half. I believe I actually might have got this one right by betting early. I got it at two and a half. So suck on it because um, I'm getting, cool. nice. I'm getting crushed everywhere else on these early bets. Um, yeah, I <coughs> UCLA destroyed Washington which makes me think that Michigan State is even worse than I originally thought. But, like, we got the Michael Penix last week that, like, I always kind of thought was Michael Penix, and then they, I bet against him in the Michigan State game, and he blew me away. So then I hammer Washington, and I don't know. Now I'm back on board of Penix sucks, and he'll probably go out and throw 500 yards, and they'll win the game. But I'm taking Utah <laughs> on this one. Nice. No, I like that. Dude. Again, I said it last week, the Pac-12 has some good-ass football this year. Like, as much flack as it's taking for its revenue share and how it screwed up the UCLA-USC thing, at least this year, dude, like, they're one of the stronger conferences, absolutely. UCLA, I, I took them as one of the teams that would disappoint this year. I couldn't have been more wrong. They look they look really good. Um, and, you know, they're, Zach Charbonnet is a great running back. Uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson's been killing it. He's leading the pack uh, 12 in, in passing yards right now. Yeah, and he's barely doing it over Cam Rising. Like, Cam Rising's looked really good this year, too. So this is a game that I absolutely want to be watching on, on Saturday. So, Yeah, uh, good game. Yeah. We fired Chip Kelly, like, twice during the offseason, by the way. We sure did, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? We probably weren't wrong. <laughs> I think a lot of people did that. Felt felt good at the time, honestly. Really, really felt good about it. It still feel good if it happened. <laughs> Let me tell you guys you. want to fire anybody else? See if they can get a winning streak going. Oh man, uh, well, uh, not I, Brian Kelly. I'm telling you, this <laughs> is you guys are setting me up perfectly for. This is either going to be the death of Auburn's coach, or maybe he saves himself for another week. The line for Auburn at Georgia. It's 29 and a half. The over under is 49 and a half. Not going to be a good game in theory, but Georgia has looked pretty weak the last two weeks. And yep. that's a ton of points. So I am on Auburn plus 29 and a half. I'll probably lose. You know what's it. wild? Stetson Bennett has 1,500 passing yards and only five touchdowns. 
Like that is crazy to me. There's they're just an running issue. the hell out of the ball at the goal line. There's an issue on the offense, and then they they're not getting it in like the last two weeks, so they're kicking field goals and it's killing the covers. Yeah, makes sense. Robbie Ashford's looked good for uh, Auburn since he got there. He he looks much far better, away, much better. Yeah, than the quarterback they were starting before, and he sucked at Oregon. So good for him. Happy. Yeah, but Brian Harson, holy hell, talk about a guy that's just itching to get fired. What is his buyout like? Fifteen million. If he gets canned, I would take it. Fire me. Fire me now. Such a, yeah, such a sweet deal. Dude, If it, I guarantee he's hoping beyond all hopes that he gets canned, doesn't have to compete in the SEC and the pressures that come with that and like deal with crazy-ass Auburn, and he can just go over to a team like, I don't know, like ASU or Colorado maybe and like just jump back into like where he's from, the West Coast, and just do well. Like he's a good coach. I don't think he's a bad coach. I just think he was a bad fit. Know. Bad fit for that. Yeah, that bad fit from the start. Team. It was a weird. It was a weird hire. He's probably dead after this week, even if they they do cover. But I'm I'm gonna hope that he's fighting for his job a little bit. So that or Georgia's just Let's not see. that dominant. Um, yeah, kind love, of. A, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say I love this on Twitter. It was like this guy just like Auburn does go to pick does to like to pick and choose from the old Testament. And when they go, they go hard. And that just like sounds exactly like Auburn. So I just, I read it and was like, I was like, perfect. That's like so perfect, but carry on. No, the, the, uh, the next two are kind of just me trying to figure out what to really make of the Washington Michigan state game. Um, I'm going to kind of bleed these two together. Cause I don't think they're necessarily super interesting games. So you guys will probably want to talk about Washington at ASU a little bit more. But I, I just assumed Michigan State was truly, truly, truly horrible, and maybe they are, but, but that would mean that Washington's kind of average. Um, I have Ohio State at Michigan State, lines at 26.5, over-unders at 64.5. Ohio State now has two incredible running backs. C.J. Stroud will probably win the Heisman just because you have Bryce Young injured for a few weeks, so its stats will not compare. Um, He's also super good. He, well, that too. I mean, until Penn State beats him and he doesn't have a Heisman moment in that game. Um, but I'm on Ohio State to cover that one because I think Michigan State is dog shit. And then I think Washington is – ASU kind of let me down last week with uh, – I was really thinking they were going to be more dead than they were dead. But Washington to cover on that one. That line is at 13 and a half. Why do we think that Michigan State is as bad as they are? Because they were good last year, and they only lost really like Kenneth Walker for the most part, right? Am I I wrong in that? Yeah, I mean, part of this, though, is that I think ultimately, like, you can't be that successful only taking dudes from the transfer portal as, like, where you're going to get all your offense. Like, they're supposed to be plugs for, like, a strong roster. And I think Mel Tucker just kind of went out and had some great success. And I think everybody looked at it and it's like, oh, every transfer portal guy they add is going to be unbelievable. And Peyton Thorns looked very average, which shouldn't be the case for a six-year senior like he is. Like, I don't know, man. Like, they have decent players, but they're just not – they're not good this year. Like, they're, they're, there's something wrong there. I hope. Who knows? Maybe they'll fucking beat Ohio State. It could – I have no concept anymore of what's actually happening. I feel lost. You, you have to, you have to respect a guy who cashed a ninety-five million dollar check though for just handing the ball to Kenneth Walker. <laughs> yeah, that he's just crazy. like, hey, I've got an idea. Let's <laughs> give the ball to Kenneth Walker a lot, and then they go like you know nine and one, ten and one, whatever they did last year, <laughs> get the giant contract, and it's just like, yeah, with the transfer portal or whatever, it'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> literally hit the lottery with one player. I love it. Yo, you're completely right, by the way, too, Ben, on that Washington ASU game. If the line, I have it on ESPN right now at 14. Like, they're going to beat ASU by more than 14. Like, ASU is not good. Yes, they did not get blown out as much as we thought they would last week. But Washington, even though they got beat pretty pretty handedly last week, like, they're, they're a good team. Like, I'm confident in saying that they are a good team and they are going to beat the living dog shit out of ASU because there's nothing more that I'm going to like talk into existence than ASU at one and five. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it should happen. I just they need to cover. You know, that's that's my biggest concern. <laughs> I did the. Like, I, I did don't the, care about the rivalry. <laughs> I did. I did the sneaky play last week where I let uh you know USC sleepwalk for a little bit, then live bet them, and then it was like really easy because like I never was scared of ASU. So maybe you know the bummer is you could let this game get away from you if like Washington comes out and is up 21 nothing because then the number starts to get scary. But if they come out and it's even for a while and that line starts to move or or ASU even scores first somehow, like and you actually, you know, that's when you can live bet those and like you ultimately believe in Washington. You know Washington's gonna win. You're not gonna sweat your money. Those are when like those live bets are the best. I also think SC just didn't give a shit about ASU last week. Because why was sleepwalking man? They didn't care. Probably no. not. Um you wanna you want to talk about hot seats though. Is it time for Morgan Freeman to to be on the hot seat at Notre Dame? We got BYU at Notre Dame. Did you say Morgan Freeman? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like I like that though. You like that? Pretty wow. good. Um, it's close enough in name, dude. Like that's if you if you like mix up some letters in people's names, famous or not, I'm just be like, oh, that's Morgan Freeman. Um, but uh, anyway, bad jokes aside. The 26-year-old Mormons heading into Notre Dame. It's it's a battle of the religions. I have BYU plus three and a half on this one. I think Notre Dame loses. They've been bad this year. And I feel like I forgot about them. Were they on a bye last week? Maybe that's why. Yeah, they were on a bye. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. I didn't forget. I'm hammering BYU on this one. This is an old school rivalry, isn't it? Like back in the nineties, wasn't this kind of a big game? If I remember like, correctly, I think in the eighteen nineties, Mormons and Catholics did not get along, so it would make sense. Yeah, the eighteen yeah. nineties for sure. You're absolutely right. Um, no, I cannot believe that Notre Dame is favored in this game. Granted, wait, it's at Allegiant Stadium. It's in Vegas. Oh, is it? Oh, dude, dude, dude this, this, if this is in Vegas, dude, that's, that's if this why you second home. Dude, holy hell, yeah, it is. I mean, Henny's been to a, a BYU Arizona game in Vegas. Tell tell us what that's like, Henny. Um, security's heavy, man. You cannot get on that BYU side just in case you're trying to. Um, no reason, just trying to get over there, mingle with the folks. But uh it would stand to reason that those would be shorter beer lines, and I don't know why I can't go over there, sir. Uh, but anyways, like, yeah, it's, it's always weird. Like BYU actually does travel really well to Las Vegas. So, um, yeah, I don't want to like get into a whole religious thing here, but like, yeah, it's just, it's an interesting thing that they just like end up in Vegas and they seem to actually really like it. Like, despite what you may think. They, they just resist the temptations, I think the whole time. Um, <laughs> but uh they're terrible <laughs> yeah i'm terrible i mean but we're not gonna go down the jesuit school route again um <laughs> no, you, guys, you blew that I one out of the I know. i'm like i gotta explain i know what the next question is <laughs> yo byu is gonna crush notre dame if it's at if it's a legion like i'm just telling you right now oh man that that's gonna be a fun game though except it's not because notre dame's offense is just straight doo-doo and uh, BYU, I think, is is much better than people are imagining. I think I think Vegas is still looking at that Oregon game and being like, "Oh, maybe BYU is not that good." BYU is still very good. Oregon was horrible week one, and they've been good since. And then BYU yes. was kind of like just kind of caught in the crosshairs on that one. Um, all right, let me uh, let me get into some of these other ones. There, there's some good games. Like, I don't really care about any of these other ones, but like they're interesting lines. Um, Texas A&M at Bama. The line is at 23 and a half, 51 and a half over under. I don't have any money on this game because CJ Stroud is out and I don't know what that means, but um honestly like A&M is Bryce Young you mean? That's what I meant. Dude, they're, they're, whatever. <laughs> it's 10 it's 10:23. 10, um but yeah, I'm I'm not touching it, but it's an interesting one because I think Bama just beats the shit out of A&M and then Nick Saban interaction at the end of the game is going to be electric handshake no no handshake how do what do they do like these guys have been at each other's throats the entire off season about the recruiting class a m pulled like this is going to be i would watch this game for the end result of just the handshake at the end or lack thereof uh, yeah 
I agree. Like, I, it is going to be interesting to see how Bama is without Bryce Young, but they have – they got the running backs to to run all over A&M. Um, I will say, though, that last week when A&M's backup quarterback came into the game because I think Max Johnson got hurt, uh, he was kind of electric. He looked a lot better than when he w- was the starter initially. So, and dude, A&M plays Alabama tough every single year since Jimbo got there. So it's still, they, I would I would definitely you know yeah. take take A and M on the spread. Plus, plus twenty four is that just like Vegas's belief in how petty Saban is? Like yes. oh yeah, he's been thinking about this one all it, damn year. Like that's like the only explanation really. Calling timeouts to get another touchdown into cover, dude. I, I could see it happening. <laughs> yeah, I could too. I, that's like because that no, it is a big number considering they they are bringing in their number two quarterback. I mean, granted, like he's a four star kid and he looked fine, and I'm sure they're going to be like Bama's Bama, and they should be fine. But A and M has a lot of like talent too, so it's a big number. Uh, dude, I know it's this stuff is why <laughs> I want to see. I just I'll watch that one. I'll, I'm excited to see where that one's at. There's some other good ones in here. Honestly, like I, I'm not going to go through all of them, but like I think three of the more competitive games that we have um, are are honestly none that anybody is going to watch besides me or other degenerates. Iowa at Illinois. Illinois is four and one, really damn good, and Iowa is bad. I have. Let me see what I have. Illinois. I have Illinois at minus four. Um, I would hammer Illinois minus four. I would just lost their early round draft pick linebacker for the year, most likely. So that the only good thing about Iowa, their defense, just lost their middle linebacker. Dude, Brett Bielma has just completely turned around the Illinois program. Wisconsin two point oh. Dude, he he got homeboy at Wisconsin fired because he beat. I was him. like, you know who needs a coach? Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yep. Oh man, I can see. Uh, Paul, come home. Paul, I can come see home, Paul Brad. Chris sliding over to, uh, you know, just just gonna kind of roll his fat little body on down the road to Nebraska. I think he's a perfect fit. Um. Anyway, sorry. That I like Paul Chris. He's a decent dude. Just seems like a dad. Um. UNC at Miami. Miami has looked pretty bad. Um. I think they were also on a bye last week, but like they've been. Bad, 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 bad. Um, so I have UNC plus four on that one. And uh, yeah, to me, it's like that's a that's a no-brainer. I think I actually have the under as well. I have the under and I have UNC plus four in that game. Um, I want to yeah, give you what, both a shout-out really quick before. Yeah. You both said the ACC was going to be dog shit this year. And granted, there are – like three, four, and one teams, but it's because they've just played all the other like shit teams within the conference. The ACC is bad. I never. Like, it's bet not the even ACC. fun to watch. It's horrible. Sneaky, well, you can't watch it. Sneaky good quarterbacks though. <laughs> like they ended up like I will say like there's way more quarterbacks in that conference than I could have ever imagined. Like some of those guys are going to play like on Sunday. Like they'll be bad. And we'll be complaining about them in two years. But like there is more quarterbacks in that conference than I would have ever suspected. True. Like Sam Hartman's really good. NC State's quarterback is is really good. Van Drake's Dyke in good. Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Van Dyke had a nice season last year. What I was going to ask you though is like, how long are we going to keep having to say like Crystal Ball's good at anything? Like, why is Crystal Ball good? I've never like, I feel like I've never understood, and just like every year it gets more and more baffling. Like, there's like, oh, he recruits linemen and then he loses. He's the Jimbo Fisher dude. That's it's the same guy. Except yeah, Jimbo's won other, a national championship. Who's the other guy that bounced around from Oregon to some Florida school and then just disappeared? Willie I Tiger. forget his name. Yeah, Tagger. I feel like he's just doing the same. He's on the Tagger tour. Like he's just yeah. he's just on the Tagger tour. I'm like, and, it must be cool. He's just going around, cashing checks, living in coastal cities, making a few friends and cashing a check and bouncing out of town, man. Dude, it's just like the Florida Triangle, bro. It's like Florida, FSU, and Miami just keep hiring these guys that are like quote unquote Florida boys and they just hire them and then they just suck. Like that's, it's been going on for 10 years. Oh yeah. I mean, what a shame. Um, the, uh, the other one that I'm very interested in is Purdue at Maryland, Purdue uh, kind of going out and surprising a lot of people, except for me who called it in the big 10 preview a couple months ago. <laughs> Um, so humble, you know, humble brag, humble brag. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, we're recording. I forgot. Um, no, I just uh, Purdue at Maryland, dude. Like this is if Purdue is going to live up to my expectation, like they uh, this should be a good game. Um, I do have the over in this one. That is what I'm riding on because I don't really feel strongly about any, anything in this game other than points. I, I actually I want to complain about one other thing. College football needs to standardize injury reporting the way the NFL has. Because if they don't say a single word about Muhammad Ibrahim being injured for Minnesota last week, which they didn't, and everybody's hammering Minnesota and everybody's taking the over and everybody's doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that. And then you find out when the game starts that the whole offense, basically the side, like half of the offense for Minnesota is not playing and nobody had any clue that he was out. That is complete uh, and utter bullshit. I hate that. And I was so upset because I shot my bet right in the foot and like, yeah, Purdue beat Minnesota with one, like, you know, an, an amputated Minnesota offense. I just, I was so pissed about that. And I just, I just got really angry thinking about it, but they need to standardize that shit. There's too much money on the line with this stuff. Not me personally, but like everybody, everybody's betting on, yeah. on college football. You can't do that. You know, it's, it's why you have the, the questionable, doubtful, probable injury designations. They need to do that shit in college, but I'm taking the over in that one. Um, this, this isn't about Ben's gambling. This is about the few, the kids, the, the kids of the kids, Ben's Thank kids you. when they're gambling and when his kids That's are right. gambling. Fix it, man. Get it right. This isn't. That's this right. is a principled stand by Ben and it has nothing to do with his personal wallet. Listen here. We're talking about Tommy and Jackson and Madeline betting in, in 15 years, all right? Well, no, that'd be more than 15. In 18 years, mm-hmm. we, we need this shit standardized before then. Okay. That's, that's what we're asking for. We need to start a go for like futures, futures. Like there's got to be some play of futures. Yeah. Some yeah. sort of futures, futures, futures for futures. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Um, on. The, uh, the only other one that I think is a really juicy line just while, while we're on this stuff um, to gambling and in, in general, like, Kansas State at Iowa State. Iowa State has not been impressive the entire year. The line is only at two. I'm I'm a hundred percent on board with with Kansas State on this one. I I would be, but Kansas State also cost me a pretty large sum of money because they decided to lose it to Lane. So <laughs> you can't Still spite that. You can't spite that. I'm just yeah. You got you got to let it go, man. You got to learn to let it go. Yeah, let I, things I need help. go. Um, <laughs> However. I can't trust that Martinez kid for nothing. So didn't trust him at Nebraska, and I'm not going to trust him now. Didn't he have like 193 rushing yards last week? He's playing like really well. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. That's, he, that's like he got the Nebraska stank off him, and he actually has been all right. But like, I just still, I'm like, I'm like, no, I remember you. Dude, I don't know. I think they kind of figured it out last week because that running back they have is really good too. If they can just do some form of like the triple option <laughs> with that team, like they're going to be unstoppable. Like I, and you know what makes me so mad? They're four and one, and the one loss is the one that I just cannot get over. I really it's, hope there's like a Nebraska diehard that just heard you say we should have taken Martinez and put him in the triple because you know, like you're speaking right to their soul, and they're like, <laughs> "I know, that's what I've been saying. Finally, <laughs> somebody sees me." They're like, "Scott Frost would still be here if he listened to me." <laughs> like he was in a triple, like he was in the Heisman Trophy conversation because we were running option football. What the hell happened to him? He changed, man. See, Nebraska just needed to hire Paul Johnson from Georgia Tech, and they, they would have been fine, bro. Probably would have been national contenders. That's, man, I mean, I, I love doing all this stuff, but... <laughs> Ben's I mean, reaction was so know, perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, wait, wait, Dugan, we had a good time. It's fine. No, you're good. You're good. I just... um. Good for you, Ben. I, I'm excited about this because this is... I, I always continue to shock myself with the depravity of my gambling. Um. I'm on Arkansas Arkansas State plus eleven and a half against James Madison. Um, oh, <laughs> and that's what I'll, what's I'll their, stop. What's their mascot? What's the what's Arkansas State working with down there? You know, it's something it's red. Wolves, I honestly, I, I don't. Yeah, it's yeah a, I think it's the Red Wolves. Should have yeah, been. That sounds right. Actually, I think I think I think you're right. Which is <laughs> but, like a sounds like a bad sounds like a bad movie. Yeah, that's. Uh, I have other picks, but I'm I'm done. It's it's too much. I, I'm. Once I draw, I saw it. I'm like, I need to say this, but yeah. Once you you drop your depraved pick of the week, 
then that is uh, that's probably it for college Sorry. football for me. <laughs> <laughs> time to back away from the mic real quick <laughs> yeah let me let me go on mute for a second <laughs> oh man ben needs ben needs to go light a cigarette real quick <laughs> i honestly like red wolves i'm pretty sure i read an article about saving the red wolves this week uh i could be wrong i might just be mixing things and maybe i've been you know maybe i got a little too deep this week but where, where arkansas is that state game? man i love it where is that game is it in uh virginia or is it in arkansas uh, God, I don't even know. I didn't even write it down. Cause Ar- I'm not, I'm not going to talk State about this. Has, and then I did. So Arkansas it's at, State it's at has, Arkansas State. At Arkansas they, State, they have a red field, guys. Look it up. Like, do they I'm, really? I'm, They're I'm, doing like I'm, the they are like the they coastal got it going. and the Boise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Arkansas State. I'm, I have to look this up, and I know this is a bad podcast. I thought that I was Eastern look. Washington, dude. They, yeah, they don't have a red field. I'm wrong. They, I yeah, think that's, they that's used Eastern to. Washington. This is why you don't fact check yourself because you're going to be wrong more often than you're right. Dude, Trying I'm to almost, be smart about Arkansas State, you're like, hey, that's stupid. Don't bet Arkansas State. Let me tell you a few fun facts about Arkansas State that I'm going to make up. I was trying to convince myself to find a reason to go Arkansas State, and if they would have had the red field, I would have been like, hey, look. You know, what about they, they what about them advantage. crushing my old Dominion pick that I've had all year? That's that's why I'm on them. I'm like, I was that's driving. What happened. Yeah, okay, yeah. Now we're starting to see the little the board where he's putting in his pin marks and circling photos and tying the yarn, yeah. Yeah, connecting Marley's it. Here. I see what's going on. I see what's going on here. I, yeah, I, I bumped <laughs> Arkansas State above Old Dominion on my top 131, so that's why I'm riding with them. You know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, Perfect, dude. I like your picks, Ben. I like how concise they were. I, I like all the stuff you brought to the table. Um, let me ask you, though, who who's Penn State playing this weekend? Uh, they're playing the couch this weekend. They are on bye. So, um, they're oh, getting... it's next week they play Michigan, yeah. right? It's, yeah. It's, I will talk for hours about Penn State, Michigan, if you want, but I'm going to – I'm going to wait and okay. save my energy, my emotional distress and anguish and fears. I'm just going to bury those down, and that'll be next okay. week. Yeah, we'll we'll set aside a good 30 minutes for you for that one next week. Because that, you know, anytime we get to talk about a Harbaugh, um, I think John and I are pretty much down for that. So, cool. Well, true glad story. that you're – yeah, it's a very true story. I'm, I'm glad that your Penn State uh, fandom can take a rest this weekend and you can just settle in on your gambling. It's probably not the best for your wallet because it's just going to open up way too oh. much free time for you to you Yeah, know, I'll gamble. just be like, oh, wow, that, that line's moving pretty favorably. I'm going to lie, bet way more this weekend than I normally would. Yeah, dude, you're going to be betting on like Jacksonville State or something. It's going to be incredible. Shout out to Rich Rod. All right, let's let's move on to NFL, boys. Um, we didn't get to talk about it last week. At least that's what the audience thinks. I want everybody to know that we did actually talk about the NFL for about 45 minutes last week, but due to technical issues, uh, y'all did not get to hear it. So I'm really sorry about that. We did not forget about the NFL. Uh, it just didn't get to go to your sweet, sweet ears. So this week, we want to make sure we go over it. Obviously, tomorrow, we have the Colts and the Broncos Jonathan Taylor's already been ruled out. Um, and then our our boy, uh, Mr. Uh, God, freaking, freaking Russ, dude. What is, what, what is it? Mr. Unlimited is, is playing tomorrow. Prime time again. Let's be real. Both these teams have just so underperformed. They have both sucked. Matt Ryan is exactly who we thought he was. I don't know why. The national media made it seem like trading for Matt Ryan was going to be a really good thing, unless it's maybe just because they're they were utilizing Carson Wentz before that. Um, but Matt Ryan's been not good, and now he doesn't have one of the best running backs in the league. Um, granted, he is playing a Broncos team that has also been equally um, as disappointing, and now they've they've got their fair share of injuries. Randy Gregory is on the shelf for a while with a meniscus injury i believe um this game they have at um currently they have denver favored by three and a half um i would probably concur um only because the colts are that bad and it's in denver um i know one guy on this podcast absolutely loves to talk about russell wilson's his favorite quarterback actually in the nfl um 
go ahead and cook, Kenny, because I I know we want to cook. <laughs> I, I just I'm just still like I mean I'm just mad. We talked about this subway commercial for probably ten minutes last week, and oh, nobody none of it heard made about it. it. Nobody even oh, knows man. that like he's spicy. You know what I mean? Like no one even knows that he's dangerous. Like oh, so we didn't even yeah we didn't really yeah that ooh oh, oh, oh. That is dangerous. That is a weird. That's a weird commercial. Uh, I'm kind of with. I th- I do think Denver's going to be fine this week. I mean, they're at home. Um, I think the Colts story with Matt Ryan just like, I think the media just reprints the story. They're like, edit the Philip Rivers part and put in Matt Ryan and just print it. It's fine. Um, yeah. Start the weekend early. Uh, so I think that's kind of what's going on. But yeah, they had the Devon- Javante Williams injury as well. Melvin Gordon yep. is like the best or worst fumbling running back, depending on your perspective. I think he's kind of the best. Um, and I don't, I don't know. This, this, this one seems like it's going to be like bad Thursday night football. Like you're like, Oh, remember when Matt Ryan, like Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson was a good, like seven years ago. This is nice. Must uh, see TV, dude. Yeah. But like, as it stands, this is not it. Although Russ did look a little better last week. Like I'll give him his props. Like at least they moved the ball. They got above six. They got above the 16 point mark. So now the offense is officially explosive and Russ is dangerous again. He's good. So, yeah. So get ready to be unlimited. But uh, yeah, the guy continues to be weird. And um, I don't know. Sorry, America. This is Thursday night football. This is what we get. Tua will not be playing. No. Dude, and even with the whole Tua debacle last week, like Thursday night football has actually been pretty good, right? Like the games themselves have been pretty good. I th- I think you're right on this one, John. I think this is gonna be like the first Thursday night football game that we're just like, holy shit, why am I watching this? So perfect. Moving on to Sunday, we got the Bengals at the Ravens. Ravens found a way to just fuck over my weekend again. Um, I I'm not gonna lie to you, boys. It was twenty to three at halftime. I was sick. Wasn't feeling good, and I was like, you know what? Like, I can, I, I can already tell what's going to happen. We're playing the Bills. It's at home. We've lost five straight home games. Um, Twenty points. We've already put up incredible first half. We're going to find a way to blow it. And good God, did we! Our offense did not score a single point in the second half, and our defense turned into Swiss cheese. Now. We are grasping at straws, and we're grasping for air. And big bad Joe Burrow is kind of catching on, and he's coming into Baltimore, and he's going to kick our ass. I'm I'm calling my shot now. Um, the Ravens are favored by three. Nah, it's it's in Baltimore. We've lost six straight at home. Um, we can't stop a single offense in the league. And as bad as the Bengals have looked at times, they still have the best receiving core in the league. And T. Higgins is looking absolutely incredible. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get smoked. I'm I'm gonna say Bengals by fourteen. You sound like me last week talking about the Steelers and the Jets. I'm jaded as shit right now, boys. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, dude, your Chargers dark, dude. I can hear it in you. You're messing with them. You've been messing with them wrong spirits. I had like seven people text me this this weekend, or not even this weekend, like the last two days. That stupid ass stat that the Ravens have only trailed by fourteen seconds this year, and they're two and two, and um, doesn't make me feel good. You know, does not make me feel good. And now our number one wide receiver is probably out this week too with a with a mid foot sprain, whatever the hell guys, that is. You guys you had know? a number one receiver. That's interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting theory for sure. I don't, uh, I will say it, it was the easiest. I didn't want to text you about it. I didn't want to like say anything about it. But since we're here and you're already in a dark place, I live bet the shit out of the bills. I've never seen something more obvious. I was like, you're going to give me these odds for the most obvious like meltdown that's about to happen. And <laughs> Harbaugh was like, you know what? We're going to go for it. As soon as that thing didn't happen, I was like, go ahead and cash this ticket, baby. We're going to be rich. I was like, I, I loved everything about it, but to hear you this down, man, uh, I hate I hate to see it, but I'm kind of with you. I feel like the Bengals are going to find their mojo here, and uh, Ravens might have to pay the piper. Here's the thing that sucks about that, boys. You're fourth and two at the goal line, right? And, and in the words of Harbaugh, hey, we're going for it because that's what the analytics tell us. All right, cool. I can agree with that. That's fine, right? Like, you know what? Even if you don't get it, you're, you're at your two-yard line. That conceivably makes things tough enough on the Bills. 
um, that they probably aren't able to at least get a touchdown or whatever, or even a field goal or whatever, right? Like they don't get it. Um, but you, you choose to throw when your offensive line is beaten the, sh- like beaten the hell up all season and, and you choose to throw and Lamar throws a pick, puts him at the 20. My thing is, is like, dude, you have the best running quarterback in the league. Maybe you can make the argument, maybe Josh Allen, cause he's been incredible this year, but nobody runs the ball quite like Lamar Jackson. And you're telling me fourth and two, knowing damn well, like if, at least if we don't get it, we're putting our defense in a good position. You're not going to, you're not going to do some level of, of trickery or, or whatever with Lamar, like running it up the gut or, or, or whatever, like all the different things you can do. Like, why throw the ball there? Like, I do not get it. Um, a lot of fans are, are calling for Harbaugh's head. And, like, for the first time in, like, how long has it been? 14 years? I, I tend to agree with him. Like, he's getting way too cute with it, and it's costing them games. Like, it's it's terrible. I'm, I'm glad you both don't have a comment. Well, well I, I, no, I don't want to interrupt. It's kind of hard to follow, right, Ben? I mean, I don't know. Like, well, do you have a stronger opinion than that? It's amazing to hear as a Steelers fan, but that's all. Don't worry, big boy. We'll get to you, too. Oh, I know. Well, well I'm well, not as negative as I was last week, and nobody got to hear it besides you, too. So. Oh, God. Oh, I'll, we'll save it. We went 100% on. on our picks, by the way, for those of you that missed it. 100%. What on the NFL? Did we? Oh, yeah, yeah last, oh. last last week. Yeah, the lost audio, hundred percent. Oh yeah, you're right. Because you're totally right. I took the Bills. You're so right. Yeah, for sure. Oh man. Okay. Anyway, we have the Giants at the Packers. <laughs> uh, the Giants might not have a quarterback. Saquon Barkley was taking uh, Wildcat snaps towards the end of the game because Daniel Jones got hurt. And then uh, uh, Daniel Jones takes wildcat snaps. So I'm not even sure that the offense changed, but go ahead. You're, you're not wrong. But then I believe your boy, uh, Tarod Taylor. It's not Tyrod, right? I think he said we, we pronounce it Tarod. Yeah, Tarod. You're right. The correct yeah. pronunciation is Tarod. Then he got hurt. So uh, they did not have a quarterback. Um, they still may not. Um, they're going to the icy tundra. I don't know if it's icy yet, but Lambeau playing Aaron Rodgers. This is as easy of a game as you can get. You know, Green Bay uh, minus eight. I would I would hammer that all day. Um, Green Bay is going to smash them. Not um, so even fast, with my friend. Not so oh, fast. Yeah. Does they Ben don't, have an? Yeah, does they can. Ben have they're, an they're, NFL take? Let Ben cook real quick. people. Yeah, I'm let, out of the way, but let, what, let Ben cook real quick because Ben's always defense, quiet during my segment. Well, I'm usually talked out from college. What NFL defense gives up the highest rate of explosive rush plays in the league? Is it the Green Bay Packers? It is the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers allow a higher percentage of over 12 and a half yard rushing plays than any other team. Saquon looks like Jesus again. <laughs> I, I think I think Giants cover. I don't know if they win, but I think the Giants can cover. You think so? Even with the the Giants possibly not having a good quarterback, probably better I mean, than never not have Daniel Jones on the but... field, dude. Like honestly, like if he's hurt, I, hell yeah, I can't argue that. I just don't think the Packers are like really putting anybody away. Like this is a game I just don't like. Like I just don't know enough. Besides the nice little stat that Ben gave us, but like I don't know, the Packers just aren't putting anybody away. They struggled. Like I mean, they've been struggling. I mean, who did they play last week, and why am I forgetting? But that Bucks. took forever for them to bury them. I mean, it's just yeah, the Bucks. It, yeah, they weren't the Bucks weren't moving the ball at all. They like had completely abandoned the running game. You know, like and it was yeah. still just they just couldn't. Do, I don't know. Packers are just having a hard time putting teams away. I mean, I think they'll continue to get better, and at some point they'll break through. But boys, it feels like a boys, lot. Before we go on, okay, the under is forty one. Do y'all know where this game is being played? London. The Lunder. Oh boy. Are we going with it? I think this is Dude, the game to do it. It doesn't the Lunder went way over last week, by the way. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't this might feel be like the real hits. like to me a real Lunder is like horrible, horrible teams. Like send send England our trash. 
And like these are not great teams, but like they don't feel like trash. Oh, they're three and one but both. Bang. This is like you know, this is the best game I think London's ever had. Probably. But boys, like in terms like of the wonder, in terms of the wonder, this is the game. You're you're talking about like Henny, you just said it. The Packers are not putting anybody away, right? And then the Giants don't have a quarterback, right? And so if the the Packers can literally just stack the box, like this might not be like a whole lot of scoring going on. The Lunder might hit. Saquon Barkley is going to score 42 on his own. God, your Penn State is just showing so hard right now. Running back you, baby. Just, They're back. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Miles Sanders had like 150. Yeah, he looks great. They week. decided to actually give him the ball. But what? Anyway. We'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we beat the – we beat a dead horse long enough. I, I'm going to take the Lunder only because you have to if a game is being played in London. So, you know. Um, we are now at the Ben Crownover um, NFL topic of the week. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going up to Buffalo. And uh, small hands, Kenny Pickett starting the game. Give me, give me your analysis, Ben. Well, here's what I'll say. I, I Last week – I, I said I felt like I was on my deathbed with the Steelers. I did pick Jets to, to win. Audio did tapes. you? I did. That's right. You sure did. I did. and um, We won 100. I, I wrote that. Yeah, it's the Lost Tapes of Atlantis or something like that. Um, but, no, dude, like, it's a different team now with Kenny. And I, I'm not saying I'm optimistic because I'm still negative. I think they're going to be 1-7 and seven heading into the bye. I think they lose this game. I don't. I, there's no way I can, at any point, come out here and be like they're gonna beat the Bills. Like if I said that, I, I'm an absolute moron. I think Kenny Pickett is the first quarterback to do what he did last week, which was not throw a ball that hit the ground because he was ten for thirteen with three picks. So that's impressive. Um, Steelers have also never been larger than a fourteen point or I think the largest underdog they ever were since like these lines have been tracked was like 13 and a half and the Steelers covered. I am not going to say the Steelers are going to cover, but we don't know what Kenny Pickett really is going to do in a full game, but yeah, the Steelers Maybe defense like six is, picks. yeah, I mean, mm, Hey, I think so. I think so. Honey, <laughs> the, the, this team is bad. The defense is bad, but they kind of look they look a little bit better with Kenny Pickett. Um, I'm just not going to touch it, and I'm going to see if Kenny can, again, not have a ball touch the ground. Hopefully it's not all picks this time. Pittsburgh Let was me ask you. ejaculating as one, though. It was absurd. Like if, That's if you what were I wanted on, to ask you. Pittsburgh Sports Radio was like, oh, my God, we're saved. I'm like, no, we're not. We're screwed. But whatever. <laughs> like, let, me, was let me ask you, though. I know – I know you're friends with Ray from work. Yep. What What were the text messages like from him? I I wanted to just find the nearest cliff and jump off of it. It was it was <laughs> it was the most like you know it, it's every yinzer just was like we are it, it comes back to that like we're saved we're fine Kenny's amazing it's like I, I get still three picks and we blew a ten point fourth quarter lead against the Jets <laughs> like I get it. It's exciting he's in there. But they're still not good. Like 14, oh, man. 14 points is a lot. I don't know. Like it's it's funny, dude, because like um I can't remember who it was, but somebody at work was it might have been JT, but uh somebody was like, Yeah, you know, uh, we're playing the Jets this week, easy dub, we're gonna get back on track. I was like, Hey, not so fast, friend. You're playing the Jets with Joe Flacco. All right, Joe Flacco is going to show Zach Wilson exactly what to do to carve up a Steelers defense because he did it for years. And look what happened. Zach you know? Wilson just was inspired. Yeah, Zach Wilson yeah. yeah, Joe Flacco slapped Zach Wilson on the ass and he went out there and won the game. What are you That's talking right. about? What do you want, peyote <laughs> over there? You okay? He's on our bro. Yeah. I yeah. said he, he told Zach Wilson how to do it, boys. He's a good okay, teammate. Right. Just checking, just checking. He's not like it Ben Roethlisberger weird, like, not teaching sport. young quarterbacks anything. Joe Flacco. Oh, oh, right. he, 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 he taught Deshaun Watson something, let me tell you. 
Big Ben loves this. He's such a he's a uh, dude. Kenny Pickett though, this is weird because it is like I do feel like Steelers fans are really optimistic. Like the guy goes out there and throws three picks, and they're like, "He's frisky though. You gotta like it." I think I like what I saw. And I'm like, it's really weird. I mean, I I'm not saying you shouldn't be excited because it was Mitchell Trubisky a week ago, but like I also would just temper that expectation. Dude, yeah. what did uh? What do you, what do you call it um, when you are being like when you're hostage, right? And you start believing like your your oh, situation is okay. Yeah, like y'all have had Mitch Trubisky for four weeks, and now you're like, all right, well, hey, this this guy that's throwing three picks, hey, those were his only incompletions. He's pretty good, huh? Yeah, all right, like, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I'm in it's a POW. Good. I am in a POW camp, and like Mitch Trubisky was the really mean guard, and Kenny Pickett <laughs> is the guard that like only beats me on like the weekends. And I'm like, this is fine. I'm like, I like this guy. He's a good dude. Mitch, like, Mitch Trubisky is the guy that puts the bamboo underneath your fingernails. Yeah, it's better than <laughs> you know Pickett's, Mitch. Mitch Kenny Trubisky just the guy that eyes. just pistol whips you. Yeah. <laughs> God. It what is a, called it's like Stockholm syndrome or like a lot. Is that like I don't even yes, know if that's, that's what that's what I was yeah, going yeah, for. Munchausen's when yeah. uh, my bad. Munchausen's when you like think you're you're sick or no? That's no. That's when you make somebody sick that's not sick. Dude, the Steelers were all of it. Okay, let me tell well, you. You know what? I got Munchausen. <laughs> I got Munchausen by Mitch Trubisky. That's where I'll leave, I'll leave that at. He made me sick watching uh, that team. That was fucking horrible. Listen here, you still got Mason Rudolph waiting in the wings. All right, yeah, he's there stupid for Stupid idiot. Stupid idiot. <laughs> uh, this is what I needed after talking about the Ravens. Thanks, Ben. This is this is why you're here, bud. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. All right, let's go to John's game of the week: the Chargers at the Browns. Man, Jacob Brisket, can he deliver against against John's Chargers? What do you think, John? What are, what are we thinking? I'm just a bowl of optimism over here. Uh, it, I I don't believe in any. I think I think we're like gonna lose to the Browns. You know what I mean? I think we're gonna lose to the Browns. That's what I think. I think I'm we're like, oh man. I was like, I just wish we could be in this division so we could play these teams twice. Because I think if we got a second crack at the Browns, we'd get them just like the Ravens. But uh, I I don't know. I don't feel any good at. I don't feel good about the Chargers at all. Because even when they looked good last week, so. Looks like Staley is going to be an adult and like we're just going to out coach somebody and just show our talent on the field and dominate. And then, like, you slowly watch that ticker and they're just creeping back into the game. And you're like, dude, you can't even put away the Texans. Like, the word, the only team that hasn't won this year, we still can't just like bury them and just be done with this. Like, that ended up being a game in the fourth quarter. So I have no confidence whatsoever. The Chargers are still an absolute shit show. Um, <laughs> don't bet, don't bet them. Like, save your money. Also, the Browns probably aren't that good either with Jacoby Brissett. So, coin toss, you know, whatever. I have I, I have all the same pessimism you do about your teams. I hate them. Dude, it was so funny. I was watching the, the ticker on the bottom of the, the channel last week, right? And I saw you guys were up. You guys were up, like, kind of big, right, against the Texans at one point. Yeah, it was like twenty seven like, nothing or whatever. Yeah. I mean we, we, yeah. it was just Eckler was getting Eckler was scoring touchdowns. It was like everything that it, like I thought this would be. I'm like, yeah, just give the ball to Eckler. He had twenty touchdowns last year. Like yeah. if you give him the ball, he scores touchdowns. Like he's not the best running back in the world, but like he knows what he's doing. Like just get him Yeah. And then I uh, I start seeing the text and just start creeping up and I was like, Oh man. I had the same thought you had. I was like, you know what? I sh- I could text John right now, but I shouldn't. And at least your team won, right? So you you ultimately yeah. had the last laugh. But it was also one of those situations where you're completely right. The Chargers should have blown out the Texans, and they didn't, right? So can I just uh, it, can I just say like there is a special place in hell for the friend who like knows you're the biggest diehard fan of a team, and then just like rubs salt in the wound as soon as your team loses. It's like I don't even want to fucking be alive, and you're over here just like texted me about my team sucking so shout out to that was like to all of us th- that was like five yeah. of my friends this <laughs> so weekend yeah. and to all yeah. five of you i say fuck you so thank you ben for bringing that <laughs> yeah. up my favorite is like so you guys kind of have that with steelers ravens though where that's tough like because my friends that are like broncos fans like 
The best is when the Broncos are all like when they're also in their head about how bad they are. Then of course, like we all play nice, like oh yeah, yeah, it sucks you guys miss field goals. And I'm like yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure like Russ is going to be fine. But like when when it's like heated, dude, we can't fire that text out fast enough. Like we all just out for blood. You know what I mean? Yeah, like if, dude. You know, then it's like, different. yeah, right. Yeah. are tough, man, because those friends will just stab you right in the heart and watch you bleed out. Like they they will look you in the eye the entire time. Especially just, something like what Ben and I have, like the Raven Steelers. Like I cannot make fun of him quicker, like quick enough. Like that year, Ben. I don't know if you remember. When okay, OG, I'm gonna cut you off while you there. talk about how well, special just, your rivalry is. Sounds like the Yankees stuff to me. I don't really. I just, uh, rivalries happen in the West too, but okay, calm down. No, I just, it's, it's not a regional thing. It's just because like Ben and I have been going at this for what Ben like five years, like yeah. where we just talk shit to each other. I was just gonna say the year that. Uh, we trotted out RG3 in like week 17 and beat the Steelers. Like I could not have laughed hard enough. Um, that's all I was going to say. I just don't, I don't like the sympathy text. That's oh, the one yeah, I can't stand. The sympathy text are the bad ones. Like if it's a rivalry game, that's okay. But if it's a sympathy text from a friend. It's like, they're not even a fan of like, I don't know, like Penn, say Penn State gets demolished by Ohio State. I'm going to have like probably four people text me and be like, Man, tough loss, dude. I'm like, fuck you. Like, just leave me alone. Yeah. That's what bothers me. Make it five. The, make it, or the make one, it five. Or the ones <laughs> I'm gonna, during I'm gonna the game. I'm going to send you a card. The ones during the game. Like, I've had this two times this season, obviously, right? Where, like, obviously the Ravens are going up big, and then they 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 shit the bed later. And then you get a text, like, on the, the game-winning drive by the other team, like, oh, man, what happened with the Ravens, bro? And I'm like, Really? Like, you're taking time out of your day to text me that? Really? Like, what? what is that accomplishing? Like, do you think I'm going to be, like, okay with that? Like, you think I'm going to be like, oh, 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 yeah, for sure, bro. The Ravens sure shit the bed. No, dude, I'm looking at your text, and I'm never texting you again. <laughs> Sorry to get us off topic. I just... No, no, that was... No, that was on topic. Started. That was and on topic. I hope topic. all five yeah. of my friends that texted me last week saying, oh, blah, 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 I hope you're listening to this. Because, again, I hate you. So, all right, moving on. Yeah. So, uh, we got Bears and the Vikings. Uh, Vikings looked halfway decent last week. Um, you know, J- Justin Jefferson had a great game. Um, the Bears cannot throw the ball whatsoever. Justin Fields looks like a total bust. Um, they are just, they are not a good team, boys. They're not talented, but they're two and two. They have the same record as my team, they have the same record as uh, your team, Henny. Uh, they are, they have a better record than, than your team team ben so i don't i don't know what to say about that i guess they have a pretty good defense uh minnesota looks pretty good though kirk cousins is doing his thing um dalvin cook is kind of mid this year um they have this game at uh minnesota by seven i would take the over on that one i would take minnesota plus seven for sure um because i just don't think the bears can score whatsoever so i'd tease it that's all I'll say. I would tease it down and then take it. Okay. I like that. That's fine. I don't think there's a whole lot to say about that game, really. No, no I just, it's just, cool. just Kirk Cousins to play at 6.30 a.m. more for his yeah. sake. Yeah. I think it was nice, though. Hey, boys, I, I do want to say this because I'm a dad. Ben, you can, you yeah. can speak to this. Um, I wake up early anyway because my daughter wakes up early. Having a game on at 6.30 in the morning – uh, cause it's in London. That's nice. That was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed that. I was able to throw on some, some football. It was, it was a nice change of pace. It's like college game day for me. It's like, this is the only time I'm like, okay, waking up at 6 AM on a weekend. I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. This is fine. You yeah. go run around. I'm, I'm just going to sit here and watch. Yeah. We're all, yeah. we're all in Arizona, but like as soon as the weather turns crisp, that hits even better too. Like if we can just get a couple crisp mornings, Boys. the coffee actually tastes a little better. And you can watch that early game. It's kind of what makes me want to get into soccer sometimes. I'm like, no, early games, that'd be do nice. That. Don't, don't do that. No, I, no, do it. I know, do but it's, it. like, it's, on a, it's on a field and like it's it's early and it's quiet and you can just watch a game. I mean, it, it sounds right, but, you know, I, Ben, I'm not going to do it. If John, you I'm like soccer you if you choose to do it. and you have any testosterone in your body, just watch hockey instead. It's the same general concept with more talent, <laughs> more physical violence. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I like life. watching hockey. I genuinely actually like watch like watching yeah. hockey, but I also still like 
I, we just have to, I just think like hockey fans also have to accept the fact that like people just don't play it. Like it's just a rich kid sport and they just like masquerade. They're like, no, it's a bunch of hooligans fighting. I'm like, no, it's a bunch of rich kids fighting. Like it's an expensive sport to play. Anyway. It's yeah. like golf with violence. It's perfect. It's true. Yo, real quick though, it is actually starting to get kind of chilly here. At least we're in our neck of the woods down here in, in Arizona. Uh, and your boy bought some pumpkin beers this weekend. I don't know how y'all feel about pumpkin beer, but them, them things were hitting on Saturday. Let me just tell you right now. Um, I'm all for the pumpkin beers. So there's two um, acceptable ones that you probably can't find out here, but I miss dearly from the East Coast. Southern Tier Brewing out of New York, Pumpkin, awesome. And then uh, Blockhouse out of Ohio, their their pumpkin is awesome as well. Pumpkin, Ben, you can actually get a total wine. Oh hell yeah, dude! I'm gonna get drunk this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no Penn State to worry about. Time to throw down on some pumpkin. I love it. That's oh, 6 a.m. Yeah. beer hits. <laughs> Yo, your boy, I, dude, I went tailgating on Saturday, so I knew full well. Um, I, I didn't have – we didn't have the baby on Saturday. We had the father-in-law to watch her. Um, I, uh, I threw him back, boys. I, I, had myself, I had myself a Saturday, and it, it was – Huge shout-out to the cats, by the way. Like, I mean, we don't really talk about it on this show because it's like, oh, yeah, like we don't want to just like homer it up all the time. But like FanDuel still hasn't paid me. I don't understand. Am I going to have to wait wait till the end of the year on this? I got That's him at dumb. over it two and a half. right away. I have him at over two and a half. Am Dude, I- and they didn't just get they didn't just get to three wins, bro. Like Jaden Delora. Holy hell. He's the real deal, bro. Like. What do you have, Penny? Like 440 passing yards, six touch, like six, six tutties. touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. PFF got him big arm. Yeah, he's he's legit, man. Jacob Cowling had like 180 yards receiving, like low key. And this is going to sound very homery. And Ben, you're probably going to be like to this. Like Arizona might have like a top 10 receiving core in the entire like nation. Shut the fuck up. I'm not uh, even kidding, dude. All right. No, I, it is a. It's a really good receiving core. Like I honestly like it. What what Arizona's football team is right now is like if you could turn them into an NBA Jam team and you could only take like three players, you would pick them. You would pick them a lot. Dude. Now, like their defensive line and their offensive line and like other positions like aren't going to be at the level of like programs that have been recruiting at a high level for years. They're not bad years. either though. Like but they're like, mediocre. No, but least. like we're going to find out they get, they got like six ranked opponents coming because they play in the Pac-12, which is obviously the toughest conference in America outside of the SEC. No, but like know. because definitely they're than, going up against like a, than Big 10. Hey, we don't a Big 10 only has three ranked three ranked teams. I mean, really we shouldn't even talk about it on this program. They're really not relevant. But like yeah. The Pac-12 is loaded, and where they're going to go up against it, we're going to find out Arizona like has a lot of holes still. I think, which also, sure. if you got Oregon at minus ten and a half to when it opened, I think that's a really good number for 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 betting on Oregon. But as an NBA Jam team, Ben, Gross. like this is a really good team at like a good quarterback, good receivers, and then after that, I think there's you know a lot of a lot of roster building to be done. Dude, look at last week. I know we played Colorado, but like I'm actively looking Cowing for a high had- cliff to jump off of. Cowing had 180 yards receiving. Darian, Dorian Singer had like 150. And then our freshman, who got Pac-12 freshman of the week, had 90 yards and a tutty. Like, bro, like we're out here right now, right? Like give Arizona a couple more years. I, I told I'll all be, our guests all offseason, Arizona is going to be a decent team in a couple of years. I'll be happy when Fandel pays me. Until then, I'm very, very spiteful at, at Fandel yeah. and U of A. Because that's my money is sitting there. How much did Arizona you did their that? Arizona did their part, Ben. Won it on record. What yeah, did you say? You can't be mad at Arizona. How much no. did you bet on that one? Oh, it was just like two hundred bucks. It's not that, but it was like a three hundred buck payout. But like, I want to put that. I want to reinvest that money into my portfolio of parlays and straights. So it's like, it's just. I'm trying to, to be fair. Trying to reinvest. That was the that was the easiest bet you probably made all off season. Oh when yeah. When it came to like. Like two and a half games for Arizona this year. Like, yeah, they've been bad the last two years. They had a total team transformation in the offseason and they look they look good now. Like they yeah, I think John, you're right. They're about to go through murder's row. 
but I think they're going to surprise a few teams. Like I'm, I'm being dead ass serious right now. I'm not trying to be a homer. Like they're not a bad team. Like they are, they're legit better than middle of the road. That's what I would say. All right, moving on. The Detroit <laughs> that's Lions. N- and that's NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit Lions at the New England Patriots. Uh, we'll see if Mac Jones plays. He has a uh, ankle that was ready to fall off. Bailey Zappi and- is amazing. He's electric. He is. He was great at, at Western Kentucky, and he did not look bad last week. Uh, but boys, don't don't blink. The Lions have the number one offense in the league, the but over, they're also one the and three. Over, over, over. I'm taking the yes. over. Yeah, they have the number one offense, but they have the 32nd rank. Excuse me, defense. Um, so yeah, I think even if they start Zappy. In New England, New England's favored by three. I don't know if I like that, but I would bet the over all day. The over under right now is only at 45 and a half. Boys, if there's ever been more of a sure thing in life, that's that's a sure thing if I've ever seen one. Wait, is it um, three or three and a half? Three. That's a push, worst case scenario. I'm taking the Lions actually on that one. <laughs> Maybe maybe you do a couple bets there. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you just you guys are. I swear you guys were on the Lions last week too. I'm glad I was lost at sea. But like you guys have got to stop teasing yourself with the Lions. I don't know what happened to you guys, but they're still the Lions, guys. Doesn't matter what they do or how fun it looks. It always ends in sadness. It's sad there. It's always sad there. Take your money with the Patriots. I, Although they I wish tend, I put. <laughs> I tend to agree with you, Henny. But the Patriots are pretty piss poor bad this year too. Like Mac Jones has been awful this year. That's they, who the Packers struggled with. Yes, the they sure did. You're right. They, I they think sure you called them did. the Bucks. Yeah, which can't. Is, so we, we got to stop fast tracking. Yeah, they, I know. They also struggled with the Bucks though. So you, we just got our Tom Brady's mixed up. That's all. You know. So no, but. Exactly. Uh, I think it's it's definitely a game to bet the over. I, ben apparently likes the Lions, so we'll see what happens. Uh, at three, Seahawks, at Seahawks at the Saints. We got Geno hot as shit Smith. West Virginia, Geno is back, baby. He's out here just freaking running things, looking fly as ever. The Seattle Seahawks are two and two. Like Who would have freaking thought? I thought they'd be the worst team in the NFL this year. They are not. Jameis probably not going to play this week. That's what I would think because his back is like falling apart. And even if he does play, I love Jameis, but he has not been good this year. Uh, the Saints have not been good this year. They're one and three. They are kind of who we thought they'd be, right? Like they're a team that's been over the cap for years and just trying to kind of piece things together. And now they have a team that really know where they're special at. Uh, Chris Olave is really good, which that was no surprise for me. Um, they have this game currently at New Orleans minus five and a half. I would definitely take that. I would, I'd go Seattle plus five and a half. This game could be a field goal game or a, a straight up Seattle win. Geno Smith leads the league in completion percentage. Who would have thought, right? Crazy. Well, he did play the lion. He did play the lions once. So it makes a lot yeah. of sense actually. Valid. You know who would have thought this would happen? Rich Rodriguez. Did he actually wait? Did he coach Gino? I don't yes. want to sound like an idiot. I don't know. We'll just say yes. Rich Rodriguez would have would have told you this was going to happen because uh, Gino was electric, absolutely incredible at West Virginia, and that's what he's looking like now. Maybe not quite that level, but he's he's definitely been much better than what we thought. And all I'm happy about is we don't see Drew Locke out there dancing to Young Jeezy. So you know, salute to you, Gino. Is Jameis going to be healthy yet? Is like Jameis going to play? Does anybody know? I'm looking at right now, you know. He's in street clothes sh- last week for sure. So shout that's, out. That's kind of the Saints problem. Shout out to Ben Crownover with the old injury report that should be standardized in college. But uh, ESPN does not have him on the injury report um, as of now. But I do find that hard to believe because they said his back was pretty messed up. Um but maybe they just didn't play him last week because it was in London. So. You guys remember those like inclined chairs that old people used to hang on upside down in their basements? Maybe he got one of those, and that's he fixed himself. Wait, or like that, that 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 thing you strap into and it spins upside down. That's what I'm talking about. about. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. You put your okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. I wanted you to run that back for me real quick, but I'm glad Henny cleared it up because I was like, wait a minute, are we hanging it's old the, people upside it's down? the same chair I was in when I first got diagnosed with Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> wow. Good way to bring it all it's, back around, boys. Good job. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Making our way downtown, walking fast. Dolphins at the Jets. No Tua. The, the Dolphins are trying to do the right thing finally because they have to. Um, just Too like my 13 year old. Yep. Just like my 13 year old. Um, they are going to start Teddy Bridgewater, um, against the jets. And this game is apparently closer than what we think. They only have Miami at minus three. Um, I still think Teddy probably does enough to win the game, but also the dolphins have a lot of bad juju on them. And uh, they're playing the MILF Hunter 3000 Zach Wilson. So who knows what could really happen? It's in New York. Crazier things have happened. Um, I would say a lot of the good karma is on the Jets side. So uh, I, I would not be surprised to see a Jets win here. How many MILFs does Zach Wilson have to bang for that karma scale to flip the other direction? I don't think, I don't think that actually is a bad thing. If, if we're going to keep it a buck, and unless, Henny knows why I'm unless saying you're, that. Unless you're his buddies, then, then you got to worry out. I don't know. Listen here. Zach Wilson quick. and I ha- have a similar taste in women. That's all, <laughs> all I'm going to say. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to take a quick poll. Who's into the Malcolm in the Middle mom? Raise your hand. I will, we'll just do it. It's a, it's a, we'll put it for the YouTube audience uh, that we don't have. Raise your hand if you're into the Malcolm in the Middle mom. I could not raise my hand any higher, boys. Like, are we, are we really going to do this, Henny? Do you want to do this on air right now? Yeah. yeah First of all, why not? Ooh, man? Why ooh, not? Ooh. We're here. You're the one like saying, oh, yeah, you know I like moms. <laughs> Lois from Malcolm in the Middle is is so underrated. Like, she is like straight gas, all right? She no. has that kind of like Eastern European like beauty. Like, she's 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 a baddie and y'all don't even know it. All right? That's all I'm going to say. What would be so. your pickup line for her if you saw her? I don't know, dude. I'd probably be like that fat bozo with the glasses on the show. I'd probably just be all, you know, wouldn't know what to say, probably. <laughs> you know, Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I disagree. All I, I, don't, hope I, for, I, all I could hope for is I'd be like that teacher that knocked on the door and she was doing laundry that one time. If you guys know the show. All the all the real ones know what I'm talking about. It's fine. Yeah, you're right. Malcolm in the middle of deep cuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First of all, Malcolm in the middle of arguably such a good show. All right. If you ever need a show to watch late at night because you can't sleep, it's a good show to watch. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Now that we got my dirty laundry out there, and again, I hope my wife isn't listening to this. Then again, I did meet my wife, and she already had a child. So the milfs. Again, just going through the deep cuts. You know, I, I did marry a MILF. So, uh, all right. Now that this episode has gotten fully, completely awkward, um, the Falcons are playing the Bucks in Tampa Bay. Um, we have the spread at minus eight and a half, Tampa. Uh, Tom Brady is going through a divorce. He His life is just collapsing at the seams. Um, and the Falcons have been sneaky good this year. Did you know they are – I don't know if this is still a stat, so you know, don't fact check this one. I think they're going 100 percent against the spread this year. Is is that right, boys? Have you heard that fact too? I hadn't looked, yes. but they are down Corderell Patterson. True. They had Tyler Algier, who BYU. destroyed U of A last year. BYU, BYU baby. exactly. Yep. So um, is he a know, 27 year old rookie? Is he 27? How old I, is he? He's up there. He's got to be. You know. Um, Kyle Pitts is questionable though, so that's a little scary. Um, but I don't know if y'all saw what popped up today. Uh, Brady was not at practice today because he had a shoulder and a, I believe, a finger issue, or it might have been a right. whole hand. Yeah, so he his mental is breaking, and so is his body. So anything could happen, right? I mean, the Falcons are two and two again. Another team. I'm like, damn, who would have thought? But when you're 100% against the spread, that crazy things happen like that. Let's see if Marcus Mariota can pull it out. Um, Brady, like I said, is just – he's going through the mental gymnastics of a divorce. So um, two out of the three of your your hosts tonight have gone through that, and I can tell you it's not fun. So, yeah. Yeah. 
All well, right. I lived in a childhood of, of divorce too. So I, I think normalized divorce. It's fine. He's going to be fine. I'm really not worried about that from Brady's standpoint, but plus nine is still like, we talk about this or like I brought it up before, like in the NFL, if you're getting that, those bigger numbers, dude, like these, these NFL teams just aren't normally separated by that much. And those backdoor wow. covers happen. And Mariota has been, you know, he's out there running, dude. He's running for his life. He's, he's making it competitive. The Falcons haven't been that bad. And basically half the league is two and two. So you're going to tell me that the bucks are nine points better than somebody. It's just kind of hard for me to believe. So that's kind of where I just jump at it from that standpoint and just say, I don't like, that's one I like. I like when you get that many points in the NFL. Love it. I agree. Good point. And you're right. Three, uh, three out of three of us tonight have been affected by divorce. So there is that. All right. We are going to go on Titans at the commanders. All right, Carson Wentz has not been good this year. Shocking, I know. Uh, but the Titans have also been pretty subpar. Again, just like John said, they are two and two, like half of the NFL. Um, Derrick Henry has not been as great as he has been in the past, but he still has 300 uh, rushing yards this year, going against a terrible, terrible commander's team. Uh, that defense is Swiss cheese, but the line is only set at minus two and a half. You might be asking yourself why, because I know I sure am asking myself why. Do you guys have any insight on why that line might be set so low? Maybe the commanders are going to wear better uniforms this time? This is the trap game of the week. Trap game. You think so? You think the commanders pull this off or what? This this is NFL fixed all over it, dude. I don't know. There's no reason other than Vegas is is planning this. Everybody's going to hammer it. Commander's gonna gonna win this thing. I feel like you're also partly saying this, and when I say this, Ben, mind you, this is like two percent of your brain is subconsciously telling you this. Um, I think you're probably going for the commanders a little bit because Jahan Dotson is on the commanders. He's injured, so unbiased pick. He's questionable. He might play, so uh, maybe huh. it is a little bit biased. Maybe one percent now. Would yeah, that be oh, fair? One half of one percent. <laughs> <laughs> perfect all right let's... do we have any yeah we need like a smooth brain theory for this one because i don't really know either but like i'm sure. not impressed with the titans i'm still convinced ryan Tannehill is a wide receiver for texas a&m and that everything <laughs> that he ever did was an illusion so it does kind of make sense to me like i don't i i would assume the titans are going to win but like i also don't trust that at all so, titans win games they yes. shouldn't and lose games they should yeah exactly correct that's actually that is the titans Thumbed that up. is that is the best way to say it. Good job, Ben. All right, Texans at Jags. Wow, two teams that have uh, somewhere or another kind of given Henny a reason to sweat this year. Uh, one team took it to his team, and the other one almost took it to him. Uh, Henny, I want to hear your thoughts on this game because this is Davis Mills against Trevor Lawrence, and the line right now is Jags minus seven. What are we what are we thinking on this big dog? I mean, you've seen both of these teams up up and close. Jags defense is basically equivalent to the 85 Bears. Jags offense is basically uh, you know, like the Rams with Kurt Warner. What's the name of that? I forget what like, greatest what they, show on Turf. Turf. What were they? Greatest show on Turf. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm like, why can I not think hey, of this? I, I like but Surf no. and Turf though, because Jacksonville is on the water. There you go. So this is the new surf and turf offense that Peterson's running. I do like the Jags, though. I mean, I do think they're honestly – I think they're much better. They're, they're better than we thought they were. Okay. And so I do think – I do like Jacksonville. I think they're – I can't believe I'm saying this because I did watch them early in the year, and I know I was, like, all over the quarterback and was like, man, this guy can't even complete a pass. But, like, they've looked competent, and they really – I mean, the Eagles have been hammering everybody, but Jacksonville gave them a fight last week. They got down early. They got back into that game and, like, doesn't say a lot, but I think I think Doug Peterson is a dude. I think that guy knows how to run a, run a team, and I think that matters. Like, I think it's a huge jump from Urban Meyer, and I don't know, Ben, you can hey, insert hey, whatever hey, joke hey, you hey, want hey. to here. Hey, whatever joke you want to – and by insert, I don't mean uh, – what? Wow. Um, oh, but, wow. yeah, like – but I just – yeah, no, it's Ben's jokes. Not my, I, these are Ben's jokes. Yeah, uh, you didn't um, but, make that joke at all. No, I wouldn't make that joke. That's not me. But, it's childish. It's, yeah, I think Jacksonville's solid, man. I don't know. I just think that they're sneaky good. Does that mean I'd, like, put my money on them in this game and with that kind of spread? I don't know. But I, I do think they're solid, and I would – I would take them to win. 
I'm taking the I'm taking the Jags on this on this one against the spread. Um, you stole my thunder with the fingering jokes, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, insert joke here, right? Bada bing. All right, cool. That's, that's that wasn't even. On. That was like literally accidentally ran into that one. It was yeah, like so Aaron Judge just, just like his hand accidentally which, it wasn't even on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So did the girl at the bar. You know what I'm saying? So hey, all right, moving on. San Fran. A lot of the at, <laughs> San Fran at Carolina. San Fran looked really, really good on Monday. Um, they took it to the Rams. Um, but this game only has San Fran at minus six and a half. And if you look at the matchup predictor, um, ESPN has it 51% for San Fran. Um, I think you could probably take one look at this and probably understand that it might be because Jimmy Garoppolo is Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, but God, man, the, the Panthers have been just piss poor. Um, our, our sweet boy Baker does not look good at all. Christian McCaffrey's already been on the injury report like seven times this year. Um, the Panthers are probably one of the toughest teams in the league to watch. Am I, am I wrong in saying that? Oh yeah. I mean, it's no. brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> like, they're talking, it's, it's, they're they're talking so about bad. bringing, uh, what's his face? Goofy. Goofy yeah, they're, they're from low key USC. excited about Darnold. They're, yeah, they're basically yeah. like, maybe, like maybe we can spark this thing up with with Darnold. Have you guys remember Darnold's on the roster? Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to talk about this game because you know, I don't really love how the Niners play, and God, I hate how the Panthers play. So let's move on. Uh, no, but this, Cal- this, this is a, this is a podcast that was built on Baker talk. You know what I mean? Remember all the time we spent in the offseason being like, man, Baker's got to get out of there, free Baker, and that everybody that was like. People love Baker so much, and he had seven thousand commercials. And this guy just sucks. By the way, he sucks. Has, has he shit done new commercials not? yet? No, I don't think so. But shit, you not. Um, this past, in the past two weeks, um, I met somebody that is. Um, I'm not going to say his name on air, but does work with us at the office. And Ben is uh, somebody you know that works in workers' comp. He is a fan of the Panthers. Strictly, strictly because Baker Mayfield plays for them, and because Baker Mayfield came to the University of Arizona apparently and partied with one of the frats because his best friend was in one of the frats, and he said Baker's a party animal. Like he's just he gets after it, and I've never heard anything more ludicrous of a reason to follow a team. Um, but I'm also not surprised. Yeah, but you've seen his dance videos. Guy's sick. <laughs> he he's an animal. All right, that's all I'm going to say. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Jesus Christ, that's that's Panthers football. Yeah, Cowboys at the Rams. All right, all I'm going to say is if Cooper Rush is is slinging the rock, uh, Cowboys going to win. All right, if if Dak is out there slinging the rock, they're probably going to lose. Cooper Rush is the truth. He's probably going to get the MVP this year. He's incredible. He's the only reason the Cowboys are winning. And guys, also Stafford has a negative uh, negative touchdown to interception ratio, four tutties to six interceptions. Were you the guys Rams. surprised to hear that? No. The uh, no. the Rams have <laughs> the fifth worst scoring differential in the league right now. They're like minus twenty eight or, or minus twenty four or something like that through um, through the the four games. And, like, dude, they couldn't protect him for shit against San Fran. Micah Parsons is going to kill him. He's going to die. I think you're right. Like, Micah Cooper Parsons Rush aside, is the best. He's the best pass rusher in the league. Easily, right? Right now? Yeah. His win rate with is, like, the highest. For sure. With, yeah, yeah. It's not even close. Yeah. With, with TJ Watt out, like, dude. Yeah, because I think TJ's in the conversation, but he's obviously out. Like Micah Parsons has tore up every team he's played, and even when he had the flu, like he, I, I, I must say this every week, Ben, and I'm sorry you're gonna get sick of this, but no, how the hell did Penn State not use him at the edge? Well, he we blitzed him a decent amount. I mean, he had like six sacks his sophomore year. He just didn't, like, I don't know. You ben, put a guy like, 
How how the hell did Penn State not use this guy at the edge? All right, you do this every week. I'm going to find a new <laughs> podcast. I'm just saying, like the guy is amazing. <laughs> but dude, he, in, Duke, in Duke's defense, I did it the first week. This is really just a turn. Yeah, Staff, Stafford. When he doesn't have time to throw, locks on to Cooper Cup like nobody's business. He's going to get sacked twelve times. Like Cooper Cup's going to have twenty targets. Trayvon Diggs will give up 200 passing yards just on him alone, but he'll have three picks. It's going to be – this is – I'm taking Cowboys on this one, dude. I, I like it, dude. Hey, let's let's throw it in there. Um, I don't hate that at all. Uh, they do have the Rams at minus five and a half, so maybe if you're a little bullish, maybe you just you know play the spread on that one. I'm taking so. money line, man, dude. Fuck it. I like, Yeah, I kind of like that too. I mean, I think the Rams look – like they're struggling. They are definitely struggling. Hangover. And you get them basically the Cowboys at two to one. I mean, I'll take that roll of the die. I, I mean, honestly, the Cowboys have been very solid and the Rams have problems. And the Cooper Rush thing or the Cooper Cup thing, sorry, I can't we have two pivotal Coopers in this game. Shout out wow. all Coopers. Um, <laughs> the widest it's a big name game ever. for Coopers. Imagine a big being, game for Coopers. What is it? Imagine <laughs> being pregnant for nine months and then naming your kid Cooper. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that is i don't know like big, name. big big hanging with mr cooper fans i assume great show by the way if you want to talk about really good sitcoms um the cooper cup thing is weird though like i mean i i mean there are definitely quarterbacks that lock onto their guy and and whatever but the cooper cup thing is i, I don't want to, have to go back to stockholm syndrome but i guess that's what the episode's called now like <laughs> I think the only time he throws to Higby is because he's just looking up, sees somebody white, and just chucks it at him. He's like, oh, shit, that was Higby. Like, that's the only way he's thrown to anybody else. Dude, no. I, have you have you guys seen the tweets? You know the Ben Skoranek guy on the on their yeah, team? For sure, they, yeah, They said the Rams literally signed an undrafted free agent that looks exactly like Cooper Cup just so that the defenses will get confused and not double Cooper Cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love and it. And I don't I don't I'm not even sure if it's a joke or that's really what's going on. That's how weird it is. Dude, that's Sean McVay big brain happening right now for sure. Absolutely. Uh all right. Let's move on, boys. Philly at Arizona. Arizona is obviously good lord. The uh the exchange between Kyler and Cliff last week was alarming to say the least, but it's also not surprising. Um, I, for one, have called out Cliff. I said that he would definitely be one of the first coaches to get fired. I just don't think he uh, has the mental capacity to be a head coach. I don't think he makes decisions quick enough. I talked to my good buddy, uh, Tyler Vasquez, who has a podcast um, for the Cardinals um, that I will drop um, another time. But he and I talked about it, and he agrees, too, that the car- – like, Cliff just – it's almost like he he can't get in his his play calls quick enough, and it's frustrating the shit out of out of Kyler, which makes total sense. Um, and you can see that from time to time, right? I think we saw that's probably why they got frustrated last week. Um, what what do you guys think so far with the the Cardinal stuff? Because it is interesting. That's why he's throwing a toddler tantrum, dude, running around all over the place. Okay, how he runs for sure. Okay, I could see that. Dugan, now, I he swear, does real, Dugan's like I, <laughs> with I the real analysis. <laughs> you hate having me on here. I think for the NFL part because I just I'm like I just no, like, sit in the back. I low key, like, fuck the Ravens. I low key like, actually love it, dude. It's <laughs> it's because I I tend to take it more seriously, and then you come in and you're just like <laughs> Urban Meyer's yeah, finger checks, that? you know, like. I, <laughs> Who was the who was the dude on the late night talk shows that had like the crazy hair and he had like sunglasses on at all times and he just Oh, like, Nicholas Cage. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You talking about He was Damon. just some no name. Uh, he was some no name guy. I don't know if he was on like David Letterman or whatever, but he was just like his like not even co-host, but just some asshole he had always on the show that would just make these comments. That's who you are when it comes to the NFL talk. You're like Mr. Button Down suited up for like college football, and you just turned into some some ass con for the NFL, and I absolutely love it. So don't worry about it. 
I don't have an analysis. So what are we doing? Cliff Kingsbury analysis? <laughs> yeah, Kingsbury yeah, please, sucks. Please give it to me, Henny. <laughs> I just think like, I, I don't He's know. I just clown. think it's <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is interesting though, like the idea of like, Cliff's not getting in play calls when you watch their offense and you're like, I mean, I don't feel like I'm, I'm watching the same shit over and over again. Right. So yes. it's really weird to think like, oh, he's like going through his Rolodex. I'm like, dude, you have a two sheeter and it's like five pictures on each side, but like, got- just fucking get <laughs> one out there. Note, like, dude. it's, yeah, like just get one out there, man. Like, I, I, I mean, he's a leash disciple. So at worst, he should just be getting him into a, like a formation, reading the defense, and then going from there. And it's up for Kyler to make a decision. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't have a lot of fun watching the Cardinals, so I don't watch them a ton, but. Uh, it's just, it, yeah. Like, I think this one might be the one we're right on where we both fired Cliff. We both fired Chip. Chip might be saved, but Cliff is definitely seemed to be, uh, heading towards a firing at some point. He's like Dude, doing you know that. What? Go ahead, so, Ben. Sorry. This is a very serious analysis. I, I've always thought that it looked like <laughs> Andy Reed was like reading off like a, like a Buffalo wild wings menu for his plays. And it's like Cliff Kingsbury has the Cheesecake Factory menu. There's just too many damn pages. You can't figure it out. Dude, that menu. Holy hell, you're right. Oh, man. I thought you were just going to say you look like Andy Reid's skeleton, which also checks out. That too. Yeah. That, it's got a great house to do cocaine check. in. Yeah. It sure is. Does. Those Arcadia homes are sick, man. If you haven't been to Phoenix and hung out in an Arcadia home, things are nice, man. That's like up against Camelback Mountain. That guy's living. You know the pool's falling off Infinity Edge. Very nice. Oh, my God. Yo, what I was going to say, though, was like, uh, Henny, you said you don't enjoy watching Cardinal games. I I went to that preseason Cardinal game against the Ravens, and I've gone to a few Cardinal games for not the Cardinals but for other like teams, and it always feels like – and maybe you can back me up on this, Henny, and maybe even – I don't know, Ben, have you ever been to a Cardinal game? I'll probably douse gasoline on this fire. Yeah, probably. Not. We'll see. Okay. Well, all right, Henny. Like, don't the Cardinals feel like a team, like a made-up team? Like, they're not even an actual NFL team. It's like yeah, a this filler is, team this, that the NFL yes, just threw is, in. They're just filming Jerry Maguire 7. That's all you're there for. Like, yeah, it's just like, – this is – yes. Like, Rod Tidwell is still playing for them, and it's all a simulation. Nothing's yes. real. Like every time I've been to the stadium, I'm just like this. This doesn't feel real. Like there's no, there's no tradition here. There's no. Um, it just doesn't feel real, and I, I hate it. I'm sorry, Tyler, if you're listening to this. I know, like you stand so hard for the Cardinals. Um, Kick off in the valleys. His podcast. Please listen to it if you like the Cardinals and you like simulation football. Um, but like, <laughs> I'm just telling you, like it just does not. It does not feel like it is supposed to be an NFL team. And maybe that's their issue. Maybe it just was never supposed to be an NFL team. That's why they never amount to anything. But yeah, all right. Now that it's, I got that off my chest, the yeah, we're, we're it's, running the Eagles it's that awkward thing point. though. It's that it's that awkward Phoenix. Like it's that Arizona is weird for sports because like everybody's from everywhere else. Right. And like, 100%. like Ben comes in, like Ben comes in, like ruins our state. Right. Like people like him are ruining it. <laughs> and like, they just show up and they're freaking everywhere. And then you go to a Cardinals game and it's a bunch of Steelers fans and you're like, Oh dude, this sucks. So like, it's really hard. And so like, if you are a true Cardinals fan, like I honestly, like it's just tough, man, because it is really like a transient type area and, and all that stuff. And like, that's why the Suns, which by the way, they're on a winning streak. They're back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> won a preseason game tonight. The Suns are different because it is like a Phoenix team that's been here a long, long time that actually was able to grow its roots. But for everything else, like it's just – and that's why the Cardinals always feel weird because you just show up and, you know, the Chargers kind of deal with the same kind of thing in a different way. But like – but the Cardinals is like a weird thing. You just go and it's like <laughs> – it's not even like real football fans sometimes or whatever. It's just a weird vibe. Henny, to be fair, though, we're also part of the problem because you're born and raised in Arizona. I <laughs> yes, was raised sure. in Arizona yeah. for the most part, and we both root for teams outside of the state. So. Yeah, it's actually not Ben at all, but it's like Ben, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, fuck you, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, anyway, my son right, woke up. Uh, I'm trying to put a toddler back to bed. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Henny and I can rock it. Sorry, just go on mute and we'll just rip you. 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead and just stay on mute. Man, screw Ben. Uh, anyway, yeah, we're going to, in the spirit of Steve Buskirk, we're going to go ahead and ride the Eagles on that game because I don't trust the Cardinals one bit. Uh, to finish out uh, the slate, we got the Vegas Raiders at the Chiefs. This is the easiest game ever to bet on. Take the Chiefs all freaking day. The Raiders are terrible, even though they won a game last week against the crap Broncos. Um, they're they're still not good, and the Chiefs are good. That, that pass by Patty Mahomes, where he like dodged the sack, did a little pirouette, and like little little toss over into the end zone. Good lord, that man is trouble, and I am so sorry, John. Yeah, it sucks to have him in your division for sure. Um, this is the highest over of the week, so that fifty one number is is up there. I still feels like I still feel like that's gonna hit. Like like Renfro's coming see back. That. See like the Raiders like starting to get it going. Like they did score a lot of points last week and Denver's defense had looked really good up that point. Like for whatever we've been talking about Denver, like they're two and two mostly based on their defense. Like their defense has been competitive. Patrick Sertain looked really nice against Devontae Adams last week. Like they really haven't gotten him going, but I think maybe that like Renfro starts to open some of that up. Like now you can't just double here, double there. Like they need that yeah. kind of that third weapon um, in the passing game. So I do think that's an interesting like overplay and maybe just a fun overplay. 51 is the longest way to go for the weekend though. So as fun as it sounds, that might be a big number to chase, but I think this is going to be, I'm hoping like you start to see chargers Raiders and chiefs as they play each other. Um, and I don't know, maybe Russell started to get it going too, but like, hopefully we get a little more excitement out of the AFC West. Cause so far, I guess because the Broncos have been disappointing because the Raiders have been disappointing. And then certainly the chargers have been disappointing. Like it really hasn't been that fun. And it just feels like just the chiefs. And you're like, what was all that AFC West hype about? If uh, Patrick Mahomes just wins like 13 games and everybody else sucks. I think the easiest bets of the weekend, and I, I say easiest and they very well could not hit, but anytime touchdown score, Travis Kelsey or anytime touchdown score, Devonte Adams. Cause like, those guys are scoring touchdowns every game so far this year, basically. Um, if you guys want to just play something that's going to pay you out a lot, that is, that's something that I would bet on. You can bet on Kelsey as an anytime touchdown score every week for the rest of your life and be fine. Yes. He is so freaking good. Like, good Lord. Yeah. Like at some point it'll fall off, but like, we'll know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it ain't, it ain't, it ain't yet. Same thing with Devonte though. Like that guy just gets a touchdown a game. Like, even if they don't win, like he's getting a touchdown. So yeah, this word will be interesting if like Renfro comes back, if he takes any of that shine or or where that plays, like where the push and pull is with that. And Waller mm. really hasn't been that good. I don't know. It's been interesting. But then Josh Jacobs always becomes like Superman when he plays Denver, and they just like I don't know what happens to Josh Jacobs when he plays Denver. Really but he's weird like the that best Waller running back in the league. Really weird that Waller hasn't done much under. Like, like under McDaniels who use Gronk and so many other tight ends so frequently. And I don't know. I, th- I feel like they're really force feeding everything to Devonte for the most part. Maybe he's on drugs again. Yeah. Oh, he's good. He's here. Glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Ben? Maybe he's on drugs again. Oh, <laughs> all right, Ben, you want to go it's handle just... your toddler real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, I hope not. Good Lord. I hope Max Crosby is a good influence on him. So, all right. Well, boys, that is our slate of games. We've gone over college. We've gone over NFL. Um, Let's hope. Oh, by the way, we're taking the Chiefs on that last game. I think all three of us can agree with that, right? I'm taking the under. Taking the under. Okay. I'll go over. Ben, go over. You take the Chiefs. Yeah. Well, if we all pick the same thing, if one thing I've learned from this podcast, if we all agree wholeheartedly, it will fail. So, like, if I hear two of you go one way, I'm going full Kirk Herb Street and just like pivoting the other direction, just so people know what you should take. But also, you know, yeah, we just fully got to do it. Yeah, yeah. We're here for for the people, man. We have to do it. No, I think for that last game, then I will probably just go anytime touchdown score, Devontae, anytime touchdown score, Travis Kelsey. And then I'll go the under on the game because primetime unders in the spirit of my uh, my boss have been hitting. So those are my three bets for, for Monday Night Football. Um, with that said, we've given you guys a lot of gambling advice for the week. I hope everything turns out terrific for everybody. I hope you all make tons of money. And if you do, 
feel free to leave us a, a good rating, right? Hey, five stars. Um, also, please share this podcast and, and leave a comment if you want. Um, we are available on all different streaming apps, you know, Spotify, Instagram, or not Instagram. We are on Instagram. We're on all socials too. So follow us on there. But we're also on uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Um, but yeah, please share with a friend, help grow our audience. We love doing this week after week. I know I ask every single week to like and subscribe, but it does make a huge difference. So please, please do that. Um, boys, do you have any closing words for the audience? No, just buy it, buy an iPod and, and download us on the iTunes. Yes, please buy an iPad or iPod Nano. Uh, Nano. God, I, I, it's 11.44. We've been, You're talking yeah, about. it's, we're at a minute or we're at an hour You're 54. Like, <laughs> it, I need, I need to you plug, like plug and subscribe, into I think Penny will uh, Snapchat you nudes from the official jump shots from the goal line account. Just so you That's know. We should, we should, we should, we should, we'll, sorry, we'll, Follow us on Snapchat. We're getting one tomorrow. Not from me. I don't do Snapchat. So that's going to be all Henny and it's going to be all Henny's nude. So everybody get ready. If we, if we get to, let's put it this way. If we get to (laughs) 50,000, 50,000 listeners, that's what Henny's going to do. So y'all better be prepared. Please like, share, subscribe, get to 50,000 and Henny will, will do it only fans basically. So, Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we will talk to you next week. Enjoy the the slate of games. And until then, we will talk to you. Bye.